Hello, welcome to another essay writing video. In this video, I would like to share with you a secret that will help to increase your speed on the task 2 portion of your examination. If you find this video helpful, you may be interested to visit my blog at IELTSIELTS.com or my website at EnglishRyan.com. If you've watched some of my videos before, you know that you can increase the speed, your speed, on the examination by using a, a, a proper essay structure and by memorizing some sentence beginnings and endings. Sometimes we call them cohesive phrases. So if you have a number of these phrases in your mind before you go to the examination, you can very quickly pull them out and use them as you need them. And this can help to, to increase the speed at which you respond to the question. Now today I'd like to share a tip with you that applies to argument essay questions. And my tip is to either clearly agree with the question or clearly disagree with the question. Sometimes I receive responses from my online students and they tell me, they say, you know, Ryan, I don't agree and I don't disagree. I, I sometimes I, I agree and, I, and, in, and in other cases I disagree with this. So, so they write an essay that responds to their essay question that's not, you know, it's not 100% agree and it's not 100% disagree. And I'm sure that that's their personal opinion on the subject. But when we take our IELTS exam, I think our main goal is to receive the highest mark that we can. And to do that, we should employ strategies that heighten the chances of us performing well in the examination. And if you compare agreeing with a topic or disagreeing with a topic to a response that sort of agrees and sort of disagrees, well, the two, the two essay styles are completely different. One is much, much easier to write. If you try to write an essay that's, you know, it's not 100% agree, it's not 100% disagree, it's kind of in the middle this essay is much more complicated to word, and what that means is it will lead to, to grammatical errors on your examination and perhaps small um, miscommunications in your writing and will unfortunately probably lead to your examiner at times not really knowing what you're talking about. So. The tip for today that I will demonstrate to you in detail in a second is to clearly agree or clearly disagree with your task to argument question. Now let's look at a, a question together and I'll, I'll just take a second to outline what I mean. So here we have, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Are you more in agreement or disagreement with the idea of conforming to the beliefs of those around you? I will let you read that by yourself. So basically the essay question has a bit of background, which is a proverb, when in Rome do as the Romans do. And the question itself reads, are you more in agreement or disagreement with the idea of conforming to the beliefs of those around you, which is kind of a broad question, so in our response we'll have to narrow it a little bit. But because it's so broad, it's easy for students to think, well, I kind of agree with this, and I kind of disagree with this. So I'm going to write a response that agrees and disagrees with this, with this question. And my advice is not to do that. That will only cause you problems. Now, if we look at the, at the question itself, there are sort of uh, four options, optional responses that we can, we can write. 
The first optional response is to agree with this question. The second optional response is to disagree with this question. The third optional response is to agree and disagree with this question. So maybe we would say, in some cases, conforming to the ideas of others is a good thing. But in other cases, conforming to the ideas of others is a bad thing. So we'll kind of an agree and a disagree. The fourth option we have is to discuss both points of view uh, before coming to our own conclusion. So before concluding. Because if you, if you uh, remember that when we, when we write a discussion essay, we still present our point of view our, as the writer. We still present our point of view. It's just that we present it at the end of the essay. So it's possible that we could write um, an essay that discusses both sides and then comes to some sort of reasoned conclusion. Now, by far, the fastest and easiest kind of essay to write is either option one or option two. And I encourage you, whenever possible, to try to write your essay in this form on your examination. So, of course, this may not be possible in some instances, particularly if your essay question specifically asks you to discuss a topic. So if the, ex if the examination question says, discuss both points of view, then of course you can't just write an agree or disagree essay. You have to write a discussion essay. But if, there, if there's any, you know, if the, if the question makes it at all possible for you to, to write an argument essay, I encourage you to do that because that's the easiest kind of essay to write. Very, very straightforward, very easy. I definitely do not advise you to go with the third option here, which is to kind of agree and disagree with the, with the points. Okay, so today I would like to um, write an essay for you that actually follows this middle sort of pattern the agree and the disagree. And I want to do that just to demonstrate for you how much more complicated our wording has to be to make the essay successful. And I hope this convinces you that, that uh, you know, in your examination, um, if, you're, if your goal is to, is to get a, a decent mark, this is probably not the route you want to take. So to clarify, the following essay that we will write together now is not what I would recommend you do on your examination. I'm just writing this, you know, to act as an example of how much more time consuming it is. Okay, so now let's uh, just take one quick review of the question and then we'll start our writing together. So when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Are you more in agreement or disagreement? with the idea of conforming to the beliefs of those around you. Okay, so now I'm going to take this away. Okay, so uh, now the, the question starts with a proverb, so perhaps we can um, start our background sentence with some sort of reference to to proverbs. So let's try something like sometimes it feels like there is a, um, maybe a fitting proverb for every occasion. Okay. Sometimes it feels like there's a fitting proverb for every occasion. And uh, in writing this, it's, um, you know, it's, it's sort of poking fun at the essay question in a way, because it's very true, you know, sometimes proverbs, they, they, will, they will say one thing, and then, and then a proverb from, from somewhere else says the exact opposite. So, 
you know, um, proverbs are, are, are kind of uh, difficult things to, to, to draw really helpful advice from. So sometimes it feels like uh, there is a fitting proverb for every occasion. So we can reference the proverb that they give us. Let's say, um, so just the proverb, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Okay. Um, now, uh, when we look at, at the proverb, it's sort of, you know, if you are in Rome, then you should act like, like the people around you. So, I mean, to me, this looks like uh, something that, that, that defends conformity to a certain extent, and that was the second part of our question. So perhaps we can try to link this uh, proverb to the idea of conformity, and then we can, we can present our, uh, our thesis. So, uh, what if we wrote something like, um, so this appears to defend the idea of conformity. And, um, and we're not at the moment saying, you know, our opinion of this. If you recall, the first and second sentence of your essay is not so much really a, a comment from you as it is just sort of some background information about your topic. So let's just point out that, uh, oops, what's going on here? Whether that be positive or negative. The proverb, when in Rome do as the Romans do, appears to de defend the idea of conformity whether that be positive or negative. So we're not saying that conformity is positive or negative, we're just saying that this phrase supports it. Okay, now uh, we are going to share a thesis, and this thesis is going to both support and refute the idea uh, that conformity is a positive thing. So let's say that uh, it is argued Um, that a oops, that a, a particular instance of conformity cannot be judged good or bad without first judging the, the action that is being conformed to. Okay, now let me get this set up here. Okay. It is argued that a particular instance of conformity cannot be judged good or bad without first judging the action that is being conformed to. I'll let you read that to yourself. So what we're saying is that conformity itself is neither good nor bad but rather the event or the situation that is being, or the idea that is being conformed to can more easily be labeled as something positive or negative, not necessarily conformity itself. Okay, now uh, we would kind of have to think about two examples of conformity and, um, and if we're going to agree and disagree then of course our supporting paragraphs, one would you know, agree uh, and give an example of positive, uh, of something positive that comes from conformity. And then the second would be perhaps a situation where something negative came from, 
from uh, conforming individuals. So I guess, uh, you know, if, if we're in our examination, we have to think quickly. Perhaps a positive instance of conformity would be um, the melting pot. If I'm not sure if that's a new phrase for you, but it, it sort of is the idea that cultures, when different kinds of cultures live together, they, they sort of merge as one, and their cultures kind of mix, and they become you know, it sort of creates a new culture. It's, it's a culture of cultures. And I think that that sort of thing is present uh, particularly in many Western countries, in North America for sure. So maybe in, in New York City that would be a perfect example. Dubai too. Dubai is, is a, you know, a kind of a melting pot of a bunch of different communities. So that could play as, as an example of something positive, which is maybe a heightened understanding of, um, of other cultures and, uh, and tolerance of other peoples. And uh, for a, a, as a negative, um, and something that, re that, that resulted, that was negative, that resulted from a, from a conforming situation or a situation where people conformed, um, I mean, to me, what would jump into my mind would be perhaps um, maybe maybe the cultural revolution in China and um, I mean of course you know I live in China so that's that's you know that's the first thing that pops into my mind but maybe an, another thing would would uh, would jump to your mind so so you know something an idea that you know where many people sort of conformed in their thinking and then that thinking led to something that was that was uh, perhaps negative or or in the case of the Cultural Revolution kind of devastating so um, so we would have to write an outline sentence that we're going to talk about these two contrasting ideas. So let's say uh, this will be proven by contrasting an instance of positive conformity. Uh, let's, no, 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 let's say an instance of conformity that led to something positive and an instance of conformity that led that, whoa, that led to something negative. This will be proven by contrasting an instance of conformity that led to something positive and an instance of conformity that led to something negative. Okay, so let's go to our first supporting paragraph. And uh, so, of course, we're talking about the instance of conformity that that created something beneficial. So uh, let's say when conformity leads to beneficial results. The idea of Conforming people can be seen as a positive thing. So when conformity leads to beneficial results, the idea of conforming people can be seen as a positive thing. So uh, now we need the, an example. So I'm going to use New York City, an example of many cultures coming together. So for example, the melting pot. effect that happens among cultures in a city like New York City helps create a new, we'll call it a new international culture. Uh, and we'll say that 
is tolerant and understanding. That's tolerant and understanding. Uh, okay, so the multi part effect that happens among cultures. Tolerant and understanding. Okay, so um, now I think everybody in the world would would agree that um, the qualities of tolerance and understanding are positive things, and uh, the fact that these result from certain areas of the world where the melting pot effect happens, you know, um, plays as good evidence that that the conforming that uh, conformity in some instances is a positive thing is a good thing so for example the melting pot effect that happens among cultures in a city like new york city helps create a new international culture that is tolerant and understanding so now we just have to show in this next sentence how this is a very positive thing so this kind of conformity helps eliminate misunderstandings. Um, and we'll say that uh, can arise, that can arise based on cultural ignorance. Let's get our paragraph onto one page so that it's easier to read. Okay. So this kind of conformity helps eliminate misunderstandings that can arise based on cultural ignorance. So uh, now ignorance, that just means kind of to not understand something. And, um, and if it's cultural ignorance, that would be, you know, people that don't understand the cultures of others. So what we're saying is, is that this kind of conformity helps to reduce that, ki that uh, cultural ignorance, which is a bad thing. And that overall, I mean, this is, this is a positive thing because this helps people to come together as one instead of, you know, um, being maybe separated in their ideas and maybe kind of prejudice in their thoughts. So linking back to our thesis, now let me just uh, quickly review what is our thesis. Our thesis was, uh, it is argued that a particular instance of conformity cannot be judged good or bad without first judging the action that is being conformed to. Okay, so thus The idea of conformity can be seen. Conformity can be seen as a positive event when beneficial outcomes occur. Thus, the uh, What's going on here? The idea of conformity can be seen as a positive event when beneficial outcomes occur. Okay, now we're going to the other side of the argument, and we're going to show an instance when conformity led to something negative. So, we'll use a phrase like however to show that we're going to the other side of the argument. Conformity is unfortunately found at the basis of many negative phenomena uh, 
as well. So here we're we're going to the other side and just saying, you know, we just proved that conformity can be a positive thing when ideas are, are kind of coming together and uh, creating beneficial results. But in other cases, conformity when people are uh, you know, grouping their ideas together and it's and uh, not thinking for themselves um, can be at the basis of many negative things as well. Uh, now, um, I mean, I know some people maybe are not so familiar with Chinese history, so the the uh, the example that I'm going to use is from China, but you could use your own. Uh, so, let's say the Chinese cultural revolution uh, for instance uh, was such a phenomena where the vast majority of a country of one billion people conformed in belief of misinformed um, notions that led to major led to major uh, we'll say economic, uh, major economic, um, we'll say instability, instability and widespread starvation. Okay, and I'll just let you take a review of the example. Okay, so the Chinese Cultural Revolution, for instance, was such a phenomena where the vast majority of a country of one billion people conformed in belief to misinformed notions that led to major economic instability and widespread starvation. Okay, so now we just want to show how this example sort of links to the topic sentence. So let's say uh, this tragic This tragic example clearly shows. I'm being told this is a spelling mistake. My computer has some kind of error. Okay, clearly shows um, how conformity can lead groups of people. make irresponsible decisions leading to extremely negative consequences. that make sure it links this together this tragic example clearly shows how conformity can lead groups of people to make irresponsible decisions leading to extremely negative consequences okay so we've shown how our example sort of you know proves the idea that uh, that the conforming of, uh, of ideas or the conform you know a conformed th uh, frame of mind can can be kind of a negative thing and leads to to um, to things that are, are not, you know, uh, beneficial. Okay, so now we want to link back to our thesis again. This time we're showing uh, how conformity is a negative thing. So because of this, the idea of conformity can also, keyword here, be seen as negative. 
based on the outcome, let's say, outcome it produces. So because of this, the idea of conformity can also be seen as negative based on the outcome it produces. Okay, so now this whole paragraph is kind of different from the first supporting paragraph because the first supporting paragraph, uh, you know, it was just stating sort of one frame of mind. This paragraph, however, has a few instances where we can tell that we're comparing two ideas together. Keywords like also. Also, I mean, that, you know, that uh, ties into the idea that this is not the first idea in a series. This is maybe the second or the third, and in our case, it's the second. So the idea that conformity is a negative thing um, is being compared with the idea we presented before, which is that conformity can be a positive thing or lead to certain positive results. And then the other word that we used in here was, at the very beginning, however, another key word that lets us know that we are indeed contrasting this idea to the one that came before it. Okay, now moving on to our concluding paragraph. Uh, so, pretty standard, just uh, use some of your stock phrases after analyzing both an instance where conformity led to positive results and an instance that led to negative results it has been proven that the event of uh, let's say conforming positive or negative without first critiquing the um, first critiquing the belief um, being conformed to and let me get that onto one Okay. After analyzing both an instance where conformity led to positive results and an instance that led to ne negative results, it has been proven that the event of We'll say um, conforming. The event of conforming can either be seen as positive or negative without first critiquing the belief being uh, we'll say so the event of adhering to the ideas and practices of those around you, uh, of those around a person, oh no, sorry, the practices of others. Okay. So it has been proven that the event of adhering to the ideas and practices of others, now I, I just changed that because we were saying conforming, 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 it sounded kind of repetitive can neither be seen as positive or negative without first critiquing the belief being conformed to. So we're not saying that it's, it's not, we're not saying it's good or it's bad, we're saying that it's not even the subject of conforming that, that can be, that can be, you know, so clearly defined as being a positive or negative thing. It's more so the, the actions or ideas that are being conformed to that need to be judged. I hope I'm wording myself clearly there. I guess the sentence speaks for itself, though. 
Okay, now a prediction or a recommendation. Uh, now in this instance, we would probably go with recommendation because, um, I mean, you know, conforming is such a, a broad topic. It's difficult to predict. I mean, what, what the future of conforming would be, that's, that would be like trying to predict what's the future of discussion. It doesn't really make any sense. So perhaps recomm uh, a recommendation could be conforming. Conforming to any belief is a practice that should that should only be engaged in after careful situational analysis. Conforming to any belief is a practice that should only be engaged in after careful situational analysis. Now, that's an academic way of saying don't conform to something unless you've thought it through first. Okay. So, let's take a look at the essay from top to bottom. Now, I hope as we were writing that, that you noticed, you know, it's not very easy to write an essay that kind of both agrees and disagrees with a subject. It would have been much easier had we just chosen to agree with, with, uh, with our, our essay question or to disagree with it, not this sort of in the middle thing because I mean, you know, I mean the first thing is the sentences, as you probably noticed, are, are much um, longer because we are, we are trying to compare two ideas together. Okay, sometimes it feels like, actually what we'll do is we'll read the question first just to ensure that we're answering it correctly. So when in Rome do as the Romans do, are you more in agreement or disagreement with the idea of conforming to the beliefs of those around you? Sometimes it feels like there is a fitting proverb for every occasion. The proverb, when in Rome do as the Romans do, appears to defend the idea of conformity, whether that be positive or negative. It is argued that a particular instance of conformity cannot be judged good or bad without first judging the action that is being conformed to. This will be proven by contrasting an instance of conformity that led to something positive and an instance of conformity that led to something negative. When conformity leads to beneficial results, the idea of conforming people can be seen as a positive thing. For example, the melting pot effect that happens among cultures in a city like New York City helps create a new international culture that is tolerant and understanding. This kind of conformity helps eliminate misunderstandings that can arise based on cultural ignorance. Thus, the idea of conformity can be seen as a positive event when beneficial outcomes occur. However, conformity is unfortunately found at the basis of many negative phenomena as well. The Chinese Cultural Revolution, for instance, was such a phenomenon where the vast majority of a country of one billion people conformed in belief of misinformed notions that led to major economic instability and widespread starvation. This tragic example clearly shows how conformity can lead groups of people to make irresponsible decisions leading to extremely negative consequences. Because of this, the idea of conformity can also be seen as negative based on the outcome it produces. After analyzing both an instance where conformity led to positive results and an instance that led to negative results, it has been proven that the event of adhering to the ideas and practices of others 
can neither be seen as positive or negative without first critiquing the belief being conformed to. So you can see here we're linking back to our thesis, right? Because we, in our thesis we said, well, you can't say conforming is, is right or wrong. It's the, it's the subject or the, the idea that's being conformed to that is right or wrong. And here we're saying that again. Conforming to any belief is a practice that should be only engaged in after careful situational analysis. Okay, so to reiterate, I strongly suggest that on your examination you choose the easiest kind of, of essay to write as this will help to increase your speed and it will also reduce the chances of making small uh, mistakes. Okay, that concludes our video. Thank you for listening.